friends today we will discuss about impact of lockdown on air quality because this is a unique opportunity because of covid 19 as you know uh, several countries had lockdown and that lockdown uh, stopped all kind of uh, you know energy related uh, emissions or transport related emissions or industrial emissions so it this is a unique opportunity to see whether some air quality improvements were there some special uh, decrease or increase trend were there because emissions come from natural sources as well as man made sources so man made sources were greatly affected by the lockdown so this is a unique opportunity for atmospheric scientists for environmental engineers to look into uh, the trends of the air quality in urban areas as, as well as you know at the regional scale so we will look into the effect of uh, lockdown on air quality in different countries and regions like sao paulo in brazil we have you know gathered some data basically so this is a kind of indicative or illustrative uh, presentation and uh, taking some uh, inspiration from this you can further review some literature and you can get more insights basically so we will include this sao paulo brazil then northern china related uh, data european data we have then this italy lombardy barcelona spain usa india and we will try to learn some lessons from uh, you know these studies that can we relate those emissions and air quality with respect to some sources because basically it will give us an indication that which source is more important air pollution comes from various sources and air pollutants have characteristics like transport uh, uh, has uh, co emissions or nox emissions in uh, large quantity power plants coal based power plants they emit lot of particulate matter and so to so that way some signatory pollutants we can try to relate <coughs> so you remember this covid 19 pandemic this is one of the biggest global public health uh, emergencies in recent centuries as we know in our memory and the threat of this covid 19 spread caused uh, you know various governments to do lockdown Uh, in cities as well as in you know entire country sometimes they did for certain period right so this particular uh, phenomena led to massive economic losses of course uh, but uh, you sometimes we say that uh, uh, human beings are so creative they try to look into some positive uh, aspects or positive side of any tragedy or whatever happens so uh, this was a kind of relief in terms of uh, the impact to the environment Uh, people uh, you know first time so blue skies very clean uh, you know air and uh, many ecosystems got uh, rejuvenated there were some ad- evidences of the of the of that nature so during lockdown you can see these visual effects basically like uh, because vehicles movements were restricted industrial production was not there then other activities were also completely uh, stopped so the emissions which were related to those activities went or vanished you can say went out and uh, this visual impact like uh, you know before this new york new york city before the lockdown this was the kind of picture after this was so much clear before this barcelona b- before the lockdown was this kind of hazy picture and then it was very clear similarly you can see new delhi this uh, before and after so those pictures uh, you know reveal their story or tells their story that how this emission related air quality and the poor air quality can be addressed by if we reduce the emissions from various sources now we will try to relate which kind of air pollutants were reduced significantly and which pollutants did not have uh, you know much uh, effect on that now like like one example is sao paulo of brazil so there were uh, you know these uh, four air quality stations uh, where uh, air quality data were borrowed and these were like urban road in this particular uh, sao paulo this crosses the sao paulo uh, another road is there then city center data and then another city industrial uh, location of cubatao so within sao paulo state uh, these uh, you know uh, sao paulo city as well as a nearby city but sao paulo is also a state basically in brazil this this is the name of the state as well as the city now you can see the for each station what kind of data they obtained daily data 24 hours from february march and april for the year of 2015 to 2019 so five years data was taken for these three months february march and april 
and these were the you know uh, months for this lockdown you can say uh, in between some months were there some days were there so comparison was made uh, similarly like uh, february 25 2022 march 23 2020 so four weeks before partial lockdown this data was obtained and then from march 24 2020 to april 20 okay four weeks during the partial lockdown so those data were available so that comparison could be Uh, uh, established now you can see here like no2 concentrations reductions were observed and uh, 27% uh, you know the this comparison with the four week before the partial lockdown and 45% if we uh, you know look into the observatory data observation uh, made during the uh, partial lockdown so you can see here those uh, background tropospheric no2 concentrations were uh, made available so you can see uh, you know effect of lockdown in uh, various ways you can interpret like there are reduction significant reduction in co concentrations carbon monoxide like 64% no no concentration 77% reduction is uh, observed no2 around 54% but ozone you know there is no decrease in ozone rather it is increase and ozone as you know this is not primary pollutant but secondary pollutant which is produced due to photochemical reactions in the presence of its precursors like nox co hydrocarbons vocs etc so in uh, this uh, before partial lockdown you could see there is increase but uh, very interesting phenomena you can look here like industrial site were observed when uh, you know there is some decrease in the ozone and there is increase in the ozone at some sites of like traffic uh, one and city center and then in uh, during partial lockdown there was uh, not so much increase but overall increase was observed in the ozone concentration and why this was uh, the increased uh, trend in the ozone that is uh, something to look into so basically there are various theories as you know uh, these precursors if available only then ozone is produced so if pr precursors are not there like nox emissions have been reduced uh, drastically and especially this titration phenomena happens when uh, you know lot of no is emitted by transport sector if ozone is produced then it reacts with the no and it produces no2 and then oxygen so you can say ozone uh, is reduced uh, by this reaction no so if no is not there then ozone concentration will increase because there is no no to consume ozone and this is also one uh, you know you can see like in city centers Uh, you you will not find much ozone but in countryside you will find much ozone in comparison to the city center and this is the reason because in city center these emissions of no is much more due to vehicular activities and that no consumes ozone and no2 is produced which goes into the downwind direction of the cities and when they find lot of sunshine and that no2 again take part into production of the ozone that cyclic reaction of uh, ozone production you can see later on well so uh, these are the issues that if nox is not there no is not there to consume uh, the ozone then ozone can increase because there is uh, uh, there is no this titration reaction another story another theory is that uh, this uh, ozone production is related to whether nox uh, uh, driven or voc driven or you can say nox limited or voc limited so at some places it is nox limited then if you reduce the nox then maybe uh, ozone uh, you know reduction will be there if it is voc limited and you reduce the nox then ozone will not decrease rather it will increase because you are not targeting the vocs so that is phenomena also that if vocs hydrocarbons are not addressed and they are being emitted by several sources ozone increase may be observed so several assumptions are there here we are just looking into data with the simplified uh, observations and analysis if you want to go into detail then better you go through those papers and try to you know find out what are the exact reasons we are here just trying to link uh, the possibilities okay so in northern china this is another uh, you know observation northern china this lockdown effect was there and it was observed that uh, uh, impact on aqi air quality index or sulfur dioxide then pm 2.5 pm 10 no2 and co okay daily weather data real time human mobility data all these data were gathered for 44 cities and uh, for the span of period of 1st january to 21st march 2020 okay it covered 80 81 days and uh, then 
you could see like there was uh, this drop in human activities or mobility related activities around uh, 70 percent and that resulted into AQI decrease around 7.8 percent okay? and reduction in concentration of SO2 like around 7 percent, PM 2.5 around 6 percent, PM 10 around 14 percent and NO2 around 25 percent and CO around 5 percent. So, because their sources are different and uh, different activities are there, uh, they, they, that is why non-uniformity of reduction is observed basically. So, the results suggest that implementation of those travel restrictions have resulted in uh, reduction of NOx emissions or CO emissions, even fine particles uh, like PM 2.5 and PM 10. If we talk about the Europe, then the impact of uh, these control measures uh, for the COVID-19 from 15th March to 30th April. Okay, for one hour daily data of nitrogen dioxide and ozone, these two data were observed to see what was the impact on the air quality. So, in Europe basically if you look into you know this entire region of several sites, it was observed that NO2 concentration decreased in a big range like 5 percent to 55 percent uh, in 80 percent of the sites of the observations. But in case of ozone basically there was uh, you know at a particular site of this uh, Iberia, uh, the decreasing trend was observed. Otherwise, in entire Europe increasing trend was observed for ozone as it was observed in uh, like Brazil or elsewhere. Okay. So, this is uh, you know something which we have to look into like uh, there was a concentration of NO2 decrease was there, but decrease may be you know somewhere less the reason could be like a stable weather. If that stable weather was not there, if we do not account for those meteorological factors then the decrease could be much higher, but still there is a good range 5 percent to 55 percent at different locations. But there was you know as I said at a particular site of Iberia this ozone decreasing was observed and that was because of some meteorological effects because it is a photochemical reaction. It needs not only the precursors, but also the sunshine and uh, th those kind of issues are there. So, because of this meteorological variables there is variation in uh, trend of the ozone whether it is decreasing or increasing like humidity, temperature, solar radiation all these play role. But uh, you know entire Europe uh, except this Siberia the increasing trend was observed that was quite uh, natural because NOx is not there that is the precursor or maybe VOC related limitation uh, limited uh, kind of phenomena may also be the reason. If we look into this uh, Lombardy of the Italy. Uh, due to this rapid rise of infections there uh, from 23rd February to 2020, uh, you know new ordinance was uh, passed for the closure of all schools and uh, other restrictions were applied basically in that region. And on 8th March 2020, the government declared a partial lockdown okay? and 23rd March onward it was a total lockdown. So, this uh, you know all uh, like factories. Uh, or industries were closed except uh, you know some uh, important like food related those kind of supply chains. So, those were uh, uh, kept free otherwise total lockdown was there. So, this again resulted into uh, emissions reduction because sources are not there. So, the trends of the 9 pollutants were observed during this lockdown period that is PM 10, PM 2.5, black carbon, benzene, carbon monoxide or NOx emissions. Uh, and it was found that SO2 there was not big change, SO2 remained unchanged uh, in uh, this uh, peripheral areas. So, uh, that was maybe uh, like residential related activities or uh, coal burning uh, related activities. The part of ozone increase was probably because of lower of NO that we have tried to establish in uh, previous slide also. Okay. Then if we look into the CO reduction, so that was because of this traffic vehicular traffic reduction was there and CO comes in large quantity from vehicular emissions as you know. The emissions of power plants, heating systems or main sources of the SO2. So, this SO2 reduction in Milan can be partially attributed to the decrease in heating re uh, related activities uh, because workplaces are closed, there are no people uh, to go factory uh, uh, or uh, those uh, you know they are also uh, closed. So, uh, those offices which were requiring this uh, heating, uh, so that requirement is not there. So, in that sense you can say the heating requirement was uh, lessened, so uh, reduced, so the SO2 reduction was also observed. Well, if we talk about uh, uh, you know this uh, ozone, 
So, the significant lowering of this NO concentration which consumes ozone due to titration kind of a uh, reaction. So, this uh, low NO resulted into uh, you can say increase in the uh, ozone concentration because there is no NO to consume ozone and ozone build up was there because other factors were available to produce the ozone. So, higher average concentrations of uh, you know this benzene was also observed in Milan. So, you can also say that these VOC limited uh, in environment or VOC driven environment ozone may increase uh, because then NOx related titration may not play role in uh, producing or decreasing ozone. So, this VOC as I say VOC is including benzene they are mainly uh, produced by uh, though vehicular uh, traffic, but incomplete uh, combustion processes and other they also play role, but they come from other uh, areas or other uh, activities also. In Barcelona, Spain then other, another uh, you know, study was observed. So, lockdown was uh, there uh, from uh, March 14 and uh, like restricting social contact or rep, uh, these reducing public transport or closing businesses. So, the data were available from 16th March uh, to uh, uh, 30th March 2020 for PM10, NO2, SO2 and ozone for this uh, city of Barcelona. And you can see here again like uh, uh, there is reduction in PM10 or NO2, okay, SO2 and BC there is uh, because uh, emissions are less. So, that significant uh, decrease not observed, but in case of PM10 and NO2 it is visible. In case of ozone it is like whether it is urban background or the traffic related background it is increase is there ozone production the same trend uh, because uh, NO is not available or maybe it is uh, VOC driven or VOC limited. So, the levels of ozone markedly increased in the city as a consequences of three factors this is a possibility like decrease of NOx emissions. Okay, in VOC limited environment where VOC governs the production of ozone. So, if VOC is not reduced so much as NOx is reduced then there will not be uh, you know uh, influence on the ozone production, ozone production will continue. Or secondly this NO uh, consuming ozone that reaction is not going on in a uh, predominant way because NO is not there it is reduced very uh, much. Then you can see other this increase in insulation of temperatures from February to April. So, lot of sunshine is there. So, ozone production uh, related you know these photochemical reactions were enhanced. So, these three factors may be responsible for ozone uh, increase in the atmosphere. Well, then this PM10 related uh, you know background origin or secondary particulate matter which was uh, because of uh, other pollutants. So, that is also not uh, there due to this low SO2 sulfur dioxide uh, which was related to shipping activities which was also reduced. So, the secondary aerosols are also not there as well as these SO2 sources are also reduced. So, the concentration is reduced. Well, in USA uh, from uh, January 8 to April 21st. Uh, 2017 to 2020 this data was available to get comparison with the uh, this uh, lockdown period. So, uh, you could see this COVID-19 period March 13 to April 21st and pre-COVID you know period this January 8 to March 12. So, these data were compared with uh, the same kind of period uh, for uh, 2017 to 2020 and uh, those uh, data although uh, it is difficult to call it historical data, but still because they were of earlier nature. So, they called it historical one and then they were compared with the uh, data which was observed during pre-COVID and the COVID uh, period. So, NO2 and PM 2.5 like pre-COVID uh, period there was reduction around 5 to 6 percent and PM uh, you know 2.5 they that was reduced around 4 percent. Whereas, in COVID period basically the reduction of NO2 was quite significant around 26 percent because uh, you know in uh, USA a uh, lot of uh, transportation activities goes on when people try to work they travel long distances. So, that was not there. So, it was reduced PM 2.5 observed around uh, 5 percent or 4 percent reduction in USA. So, the decrease in NO2 you, you could see the reduced vehicular traffic as you say. So, domestic travel and uh, uh, those working remotely they were limited and uh, working remotely was closed you can say that was not there only limited uh, domestic travel could be there. So, that was uh, responsible for reduction the percent of PM 2.5 you know is not as large as NO2 
and the reason could be like uh, this multiple non transportation sources of PM 2.5 including emissions from uh, like food industries or biomass burning. So, th those emissions were there uh, even when people were uh, uh, living in the uh, their own uh, residential areas. Now, if we come to India then uh, this overall impact uh, uh, was observed uh, lockdown in uh, big, uh, big mega cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata and Bangalore. And uh, there are periods like March to April 2019 and March to April 2020 and then 10 to 20th March 2020. So, before lockdown this that, that data 25th March to 6th April 2020 during the lockdown. So, these uh, data have been compared basically. So, you can see uh, the timeline of different activities like phase 0 that was the pre lockdown it was you know first March to 24th March around 24 days of 2020. So, at that time there were no restrictions all activities were going on as business, business as usual uh, uh, scenario. In phase 1 25th March to 14 April, so uh, 21 days again you can see all tra transport and industrial establishment, commercial and private establishment, uh, these hospitality services all these activities were closed basically right. In phase 2 15th April to 3rd May 19 days. So, these farming operations, some industries or movement of cargo that was al allowed because then uh, you know logistic support was needed for uh, medicines or food supply etcetera. In phase 3 for 14 days 4 to 17th May you know then uh, different uh, zones were uh, classified like red zone, orange zone, green zone and according to you know the number of patients of the COVID you know those zones were defined and uh, red zones were having uh, you know again the same kind of restrictions, but the green zones and other zones were given some uh, freedom. Then 18 to 31st May the movements of vehicles without any special conditions uh, doing with like opening of the industries etcetera they were allowed. So, in phases you know things were closed and uh, things were uplifted. Well, the impact uh, is clearly visible you can see here like in Delhi PM 2.5 reduction highest reduction of the PM 2.5 was observed around uh, 41 percent in Delhi and 52 percent reduction was observed for PM 10. In Mumbai reduction of uh, NO2 was the highest of 75 percent ok, CO around 46 percent. In contrast to other pollutants ozone increased as we have seen except in Bangalore you can see in Bangalore the ozone reduction is there, but in all other cities like Delhi, Mumbai and Kolkata increase of ozone is there maximum is in Kolkata. So, these are city specific you know characteristics of emissions and air quality. So, more uh, studies are needed to know the reasons, but if we look into like uh, very uh, simple hypothesis and uh, simple gas work then you can say that in Bangalore may be the ozone production is VOC limited rather than NOx limited because uh, due to this lockdown mostly NOx emissions went down uh, ok and there may be some uh, you know VOCs uh, from uh, different sources may be natural sources may be also there because Bangalore is quite green and uh, lot of VOCs may be there because of that right. So, but in Kolkata and other we have to see what were the uh, reasons this variation is there that Kolkata observed maximum increase in ozone whether it was meteorological factors or some other factors. So, in India you can see the increase of ozone was observed and uh, there was reduction in uh, you know uh, NOx emissions 30 to 50 percent right and uh, in VOC limited environment uh, that may be one theory and we do not know uh, which city has this kind of whether Bangalore has the VOC limited or there are other reasons. So, more studies are needed in that sense ok. Now, if we look into like sector wise sensitivity analysis uh, then uh, more information uh, can give us better insight. So, that we can look into uh, the relationship of uh, reduction of different emissions and impact on uh, the uh, air quality ok. So, you can see these uh, you know PM 2.5 levels or NO2 levels then secondary particulate matter is also there because of uh, you know some gases get transformed into solid. So, those uh, relationship may be there and uh, it was also observed that stable burning uh, uh, was there in uh, several places in uh, southern part of India. So, uh, at that places uh, you know different kind of air quality was observed in comparison to the northern part. 
Now, if we look into uh, what are the learnings we can learn from or take away lessons from the lockdown period basically, because uh, you know it has given you know unwarranted uh, situation and uh, we could uh, see uh, the closure of different sources and their impact on the air quality. So, can we look into those source specific emissions and their impact on the air quality, so that we can address those sources. Of course, more source apportionment studies are needed to exactly uh, relate uh, the air quality impact of emissions from those specific sources, but still as we have seen like NOx emissions reduction and then ozone increase or PM 10, PM 2.5 reduction. So, that gives a good uh, lesson to learn basically and uh, you know so that uh, you know agriculture emissions or industrial emissions or uh, different other emissions we can relate with that. So, in conclusion at last we can say that this spread of COVID-19 was a kind of indirect opportunity to see uh, whether uh, uh, you know uh, there are certain sources which can be uh, closed and which can be addressed. For example, nowadays we are going for e-mobility or uh, you know turning towards renewable resources. So, uh, you know source specific impact on the air quality can be related uh, with different observations of that period. And this is a once in lifetime opportunity we had just accidentally you can say, but still we can get some positive lessons and we can learn and we can apply those lessons into uh, the practice, so that we can improve the air quality. So, this is all for today and these are the references and I request that please go through there are several publications uh, based on uh, this period uh, you know observations of air quality and their relationship with sources and emissions. So, those publications may give you more information about why ozone is decreasing at some place or increasing uh, at most of the places or a reduction of like NOx or reduction of uh, you know PM 10 and PM 2.5, how much it is related to transport sector, how much it is related to uh, the energy resources or uh, power plants or industrial sector. So, those kind of information can be gathered from these resources. So, this is all. Thank you for your kind attention uh, and uh, see you in the next lecture. Thanks again.